Hi there, um, Nathan Theodorovich here. Uh, so today I'll be talking about uh, those five sources of power that are described in the text. Um, and so first we start off with a legitimate power. That's kind of an agreement among the organizational members that people in a position, CEO, CFO, executive, have the ability to request certain things from other people, um, especially those in uh, positions below their own. So like one way that this, I would say, drives a company, um, it kind of offers a chain of command to lessen structural errors and people know who to ask questions of and where they can report their problems to. This can also ruin a company because people in positions of these, th these power positions that are done by title um, can take advantage of their power and treat their employees or those under them poorly. Um, up next, we have reward power. That's usually monetary um, it kind of it's a, someone that has the ability to control the allocation of resources in an organization and give out bonuses or stipends, pay increases, percentage based or not. Um, this is a very useful type of motivation for employees. It allows them to provide maximum value to the organization because they're getting something out of it. Conversely, at the same time, monetary power and allocation. There are employees that will use either less than legal or moral measures to earn these rewards, and that can cause a lot of issues, i.e. cutting corners or lying to clients. That would cause a lot of issues for people in that organization. Um, the next one is coercive power. That's the ability to apply punishment or some sort of peer pressure if it's you know coworker to coworker. There are not a lot of drives to this. I would say that it, it prevents employees from slacking off and it punishes them in order to keep a productive work environment for those who do slack off. However, managers also may wrongly use this power. This has happened to me in organizations that I've worked in where people that have the ability to write people up will hover that and hang that over their heads in order to get them to do something that they want them to do and coerce them to take actions that they otherwise wouldn't on the benefit of the original person. Things like that can totally ruin a company if you have that ability and giving that ability to managers is def definitely someone that should be trusted. Um, up next, we have expert power. That is a uh, power given to those who have a specific set of knowledge or task abilities that allow them to separate themselves from either the general population or a general employee or someone inside of a specific organization. Um, they're valuable to the organization in one way or another, whether it be an outdated coding language or the possession of a specific technique in some culinary institute. Um, this, you know, it's the specialized training that adds value to the company. So I think that definitely drives it is having the ability to respond to different events that occur or the ability to take on new clients due to a knowledge base that that all drives a company. However, the organization may rely on someone with this type of power and that can cause issues between employees or people that don't think that it's worth it keeping them on or someone who's super useful in one specific area that isn't very useful in the long term that can cause issues. Uh, lastly, referent power. That is a, a gauge of someone's interpersonal skills and how much people enjoy being around them and like them in the workplace. You know, it's someone may have power over others based on their, the population's opinion of them inside of that own organization. Um, for drive, you know, having care, charisma in the workplace makes employees around them happier. So overall, I would say having someone with referent power offers the ability to increase employee satisfaction and keep turnover low and productivity high. However, the person with this power may not deserve it. Either they may not be as technically sound as fellow employees, but they're more likable. And this lack of merit may cause a rift among equivalent employees. I've seen this in organizations that I've been a part of where people at my level were maybe not as good as me or other workers at what we did, but they were friends with managers. And being in that relationship, they're sometimes playing favorites that people don't enjoy and things like that can really ruin an organization when the basis of equality at those levels is ruined. Thank you very much.